Wie werkt deze gerät? Bitte? Wie arbeitet deze gerät? Uh, der Delinquent wird hier mit dem Bauch auf diese Bank gelegt. Das Haupt schaut durch diesen, uh, durch diesen Durchgang. Hier ist ein Riemen, auf dem die Stirn ruht. Und auf das Kommando zieht der Henker an diesem Hebel. Die, das Messer fällt herab, trennt den Körper vom Rumpf und der Kopf fällt dann in diese Fangeinrichtung. Ja, das ist ein schwieriger Apparat. Kompliziert und groß. Ja. Hallo, Mom. Ich möchte Ihnen all die Praise, Honor und Glory zu Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakhakudash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly calls God, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David, those men that are doing his work in sincerity and truth across the four corners of the earth. And much love to the one third of you believers. To you all, I say Shalom. Uh, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying through your spirit. All right, so as you just saw the clip that I had up, which was, um, you know, if, if I could give a vibration to it, uh, it gave a very like ominous uh, vibe to it. But, uh, I want to do this lesson because a brother, the brother, uh, I don't want sent that to me earlier and, you know, it just had me meditating for a moment. And as I was seeing it, you know, I could definitely see how, uh, you know, the silence, the presence of that moment can get chills up under your skin. You know, it could give you goosebumps. It can make you feel a certain type of way. Basically it could really rev up and entice your flesh. All right. And fear. Okay. And um, I guess the largest part that I wanted to take away from that is, of course, the things that are coming to 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 some men of the Lord, uh, a story in the scriptures that happened to one of our uh, one of the beloved prophets in the scriptures. All right. And also um, mainly to not fear the guillotine, man. All right. There are many, many people who may see something like this. They may see it has a dreadful look to it. All right. And I, I want to talk about a couple of things, you know, and a little bit about the history of uh, the guillotine as well, if the Lord will allow. All right. So uh, without further ado, let me go ahead and, you know, I'll jump to the first one, uh, which all brothers, you know, should most likely know. But uh, let me go to uh, Revelation 20 and uh, verse 4. It says, and I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of the most high Yahweh, which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with the Mashiach a thousand years. So as we read this, right, it says, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. Right. So when we think of um, these guillotine, right, it says beheaded. All right. There aren't too many uh, instruments and weapons that can behead you. Right. Of course. Yeah. Um, you can get you can behead somebody with a knife. Right. You can behead somebody with an axe. You can behead somebody with a sword. You know, you could even shoot a couple times to behead somebody. But we know that this is talking about something clean, something quick. And uh, something also something ancient, even though this this a guillotine relatively isn't that old. Like so the last guillotine was used in uh, 1977 and it started, you know, many different countries started to adopt it. But it was uh, mainly used in French. That's where it started from. And the first man to get beheaded, his name was Nicolas Jacques Pelletier. And, you know, he could have been an Israelite. I didn't look up pictures of him. But apparently, uh, they tried to say that he was a he was a thief, and uh, he basically he was robbing somebody, and in the midst of the robbery, he killed a man, and uh, when he killed him, also they tried to say maybe that that it could have been changed later, it could have gave him um, you know because he was assaulted or something to that extent, you know, and it sound that's what made me think is a Jake Moore, you know, when they say uh, you know the other guy could have been and started it, could have been an Edomite. A French Edomite to start something with him, and then next thing you know, he stole from him and he killed him. Who knows? You know, uh, the, a lot, a lot of the things that we don't know about history are gonna get revealed, man. And a lot of 
things that Esau has covered up is going to be made in light in the kingdom of heaven, right? And, um, you know, so as we read that, and it says they were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, right? So these men, that's the, the death is going to have so much honor in it if it does take place. And, you know, Lord willing, if it was up to me, you know, I would say I want, want it to happen to none of our brothers, right? But you see what it says, it says for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of the Most High, this is the ultimate sacrifice, right? You know, this is, uh, it says there henceforth is no greater love than a man lay down his life for his friends. And Yahweh Shai said, uh, I call you my friends. So ultimately, all right, Yahweh Shai is a friend of the elect. So if a man lay down his life for this gospel, it say, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh And so that means we don't worship this place. We don't worship their ideologies, their lifestyles. We're not taking their chip, their MOTB, you know. And so you you can't be afraid of this though, man. You can't be afraid of this. All right? And um actually, let me get that verse first. You can't be afraid of this because that's just your flesh. Our flesh will tell us, "Oh my god, man, it's so fearful. They're about to cut my head off." And that spirit it may even be taken off of you in that day, man. It's, the Lord gave us he didn't give us the spirit of fear, you know? Even in the, in the times of fear, right? This is um Ecclesiasticus 41 and verse 3, it says, Fear not the sentence of death. Remember that have been before thee and that come after. For this is the sentence of Lord over all flesh, of the Lord over all flesh. You see, so uh, death is sim simply, uh, and like Apostle Gabar put it the other day, it's, a, um, it's simply the flesh separating from the spirit, right? And how I like to say it is basically... Um, it's a transition of energy, right? That's essentially what it is. Your your spirit lives in this body, right? Although it feels pain, right? But, um, ooh, that's a good one that I just thought of too. Although it feels pain, you're not supposed to fear the sentences of death because your your body's going to go to be with Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah anyway. But uh, fearing this is not going to do anything for you. And uh, let me get this first and then I'll go to my next point. This is 1 Corinthians 15... In 54, it says, so when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the de the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victories because we're going to be given new bodies and we're no longer going to die or be hurt the way we can in his flesh. It says, oh, gr oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? All right. So at the end of the day, the, the uh, death and uh, the grave are not going to have the victory. All right, because Yahweh Shai overcame that. All right, first and foremost, we got victory through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, it says, death, where is thy sting? So if this happens to a brother, he may not even feel that impact that it happens. You know, he may not even feel it. The Lord could deliver you from it too, you know, but you may not even feel it. But the point is, you're not even supposed to um, be fearful when going in these situations. You always have these movies where somebody's about to get put to death or somebody about to harm you. And what's the first thing that people do? They start shaking. They start quivering. They get afraid. They start begging for their lives. Please don't do this to me. Please don't do this to me. I don't want to die. And see, the men of the Lord aren't going to have that spirit. Because we, one, we've been, we've been waiting for it. Ultimately, you know, the Lord has prepared our minds and our spirits for that. It could happen to us because he didn't lay out and say, yeah, this is going to happen to you. He didn't lay that out. All right. But at the end of the day, your faith has to be so strong where it overcomes the thought of that this death could happen to you and you're not supposed to be afraid of. It. You got to overcome that, man. You know, but that scripture that I read, it says, think about those ones that have come before, you know. And so I instantly started looking up, you know, of course, there were many more uh, men of the Lord that have been beheaded according to the scriptures, you know. But I wanted to bring this story out for edification's sake, because there is a story of a man of the Lord who, who it happened to. This is uh, Matthew 14 and 6. It says, And Yahweh Shah said, Let her alone. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, Matthew, I was in Mark. I knew it was wrong. This is uh, Matthew 14 and 6. It says, But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. You see, so... First off, this is how you know birthdays are wicked because the times in the scriptures where birthdays happened, there were wicked things taking place, 
were uh, treacherous things taking place, right? And uh, also, not to fall to the whims of a woman. It says, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she asked. This is how you know how wicked these Edomite women are. You know, this woman didn't say, hey, let me get a let me get a new carriage. You know, let me get a new bag. Give me some new clothes. Look what she asked for. She said, and she being she being before instructed of her mother said, give me here John Baptist's head and a charger. You see, so. That's what she asked for. Uh, and she said, being instructed by her mother. So, hey, as a mother, so is the daughter. All right? According to Ezekiel, it says, uh, And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it be given her. All right? So he said, and the king was sorry. So he didn't even want to do it. But that's what happens when you make a promise to an Edomite. Never trust thine enemy. Even though Herod was an Edomite, right? For listening to a woman... Fall in suit to whatever she got to say and just saying, hey, I'm going to give you whatever your heart's desire. You can't say that to a woman, man, and she's going to ask for the most wicked and vile things, man. Especially an Edomite woman. It says, and he sent and beheaded John in the prison. See that? So John the Baptist was beheaded, all right, for the glory of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. This is a testimony, and now we have it written in the scriptures. This is a testimony to the glory of our Lord. And you you see, it didn't say uh, John was panicking and afraid and running around. And no, he he took his death gracefully, right? It says, uh, and he sent and beheaded John in the prison, and his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it, and went and told Yahushai. You see, and so they took John the Baptist's body and buried him. You know, but this is the, the, the wickedness of the Edomite man and woman, man. Okay? And this is what happened to one of our forefathers, one of our predecessors, man. And it says, uh, when this is an important part. The next verse said, when Yahweh heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on a foot out of the cities. And so this is also letting you know, when uh, these devastating things, of these were to happen to, uh, you know, a brother that's uh, beside you. I know how much is hard to hear. You know this 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 hurt Yahweh Shai, but at the same time, Yahweh Shai knew that uh, this is a, according to prophecy, and that he had to continue pushing forward. He had to continue the work of Yahweh by Shai because that next going down, it talks about how he had compassion on the people and he kept performing miracles. We'll let you know that we're going to keep he, when if a brother gets beheaded. You got to keep fighting. You got to keep believing. That's not your time to give up the faith now just because you saw a brother uh, get beheaded. All right. And that's the example that was given to us by Yahweh Shai, who had a great love for John the Baptist. Right. They had a great love for each other. Uh, John the Baptist said there is one that is greater that is coming after who shoe I cannot loose, man. He, he can't. He said, I can't even fit in Yahweh Shai's shoes ultimately. And what did Yahweh Shai say about John the Baptist, who was Elijah in the reincarnation? He said, there is no prophet greater. All right. So that's what you got to understand. So he knew that the, the greater, the greatest prophet that was in the Bible was beheaded. You know, this bothered our Lord and it should bother you as you read the scriptures. But the Edomites, the so-called white nation are going to get judged for the things they've done to us in this life and all the lives before and to our ancestors, man. All right. That's going to come to happen. But the point is, when you got Yahweh Bashem Yahushai sealed in your mind, sealed in your inward parts, you, you know the glory that comes with this with such a death. Okay? Uh, this is Psalms 116 and 15. It says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. You see, why, why is that said? Because at the end of the day, when we read Revelation, the 20th chapter, it said that it was done as a witness and a testimony of Yahweh Shai. Right? Of the, in the gospel and the word of the Most High, you see, so Esau is going to be pinned in a situation where he's going to say, "Hey, yo, we're going to take this guy's head off." Because that's Edomite rules by his sword, and ultimately, a guillotine is a large sword, right? And so, what he does in his anger and his wrath, he thinks that taking you out, all right, is going to uh basically say I Lord look I got one of your elect men a guy that I know now is a part of your elect I got him I trapped him but he doesn't know that his end is going to come swiftly after that and that man of the Lord who did have to die that death he may uh open he may close his eyes 
and he may open them and then we may be getting beamed up into the chariot man you know that that's what's going to happen that's that's scriptural uh you know and uh it says we shall matter of fact i gotta get it you know sometimes you you you, you try to go on a certain path but the lord like nah you about to pull this precept out so it's really through the spirit um but i'm gonna go to the book of um uh first thessalonians you know because uh that's a powerful thing it's first thessalonians 4 and uh 15 it says for this we say unto you by the word of the lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. The, the ones that are asleep are the, the men of the Lord have died doing his work. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, archangel and with the trump of the Most High, and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. You see, so the brothers who have been who have been beheaded or died in some sort of way, they're going to be uh, going up into the... They're going to be the first ones setting foot in the chariots, man. Because that's the reward that the Yahweh Hashem Yahweh has given them to be. That's true. Like even though all of the elect are truly the first fruits, but the the first fruits of the first fruits are going to be the ones who have died uh, in the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh. It says, uh, "Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, which are referring to the chariots, to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall ever be with the Lord." You wherefore comfort one another with these words. So that's a part of the comfort. Knowing that those men didn't die in vain, knowing that these men are going to be um, the uh, the first ones on the chariots as a great reward waiting for us, you know, and then you're going to see them brothers and you're going to be rejoiced and you're going to say Shalom, and you're going to say Habata, and you're going to smile and you're going, you're going to laugh and you're going, you're going to uh, rejoice like never before and you're going to be happy to be reunited with your brother, man, you know, and this is the uh, the power of of the uh the glory of our lord because the scriptures say they thought that our death would be without honor so even esau tries to give you a dishonorable death and see esau thinks by coming with the guillotine that he's giving you a trailer like, we cut his fucking head off that's really the mentality that he comes in right but when i was looking into it the guillotine is named i can't remember the guy's whole name but his last name is guillotine he was a frenchman right and and uh, people don't know this the guillotine was actually made to make a more humane way of execution in a way of death, you know, but people think it, it gives you a vibration that is just meant to be treacherous and cut your head off, but it's meant to make a, sm a swift death because if somebody gets stabbed a hundred times and they don't die quickly, you know what I'm saying? That's a terrible, terrible death. If somebody gets burned alive, they even have one with a guy you can get wrapped in chains and put in a boiling water. Those are inhumane deaths, right? So this guy, the Lord put the spirit on this man, all right, to create a sword that would be a more swift death, man. So you wouldn't have to go through that torture, right? And I, I read uh, that actually in those times, a lot of these, uh, this is how you know the wickedness of the people, uh, these civilians, which are really like the two thirds of Israel when they say, uh, crucify him, crucify him, let his blood be upon us and uh, our children, all right? Um, because they said the crowd of you, if they would go to a guillotine beheading, the crowd would be dissatisfied, right? And why is that? Because they said that the deaths were too swift and clinically effective for uh, proper entertainment, you know, the because they were used to men getting hanged, getting put on the gallows, men getting death by sword. They people were entertained, right? That that's what this world is all about, entertaining. That's how you know these same people are back again, man. You know, now when they came out with the um the uh they used to have the electrocution chair for the the death um the death penalty, all right? But the the electrocution chair, you saw a guy, you know, shaking in the chair and popping and all of that kind of stuff, man. And that would seem inhumane, but now they do lethal injection, right, to make it less uh make it more humane, right? But these people only want to be entertained. That's all it's about. Oh, that guy's a bad guy. We want to see him get put to death in bloodshed. That's what they want to see, man. All right? But they don't know that you so-called white people, hey, man, we might. it might be some of y'all that might get beheaded every day in the kingdom if, if the spirit's on the brother. And we'll be able to knock your damn head off with our, with our hand. We'll be able to smack you and your head flies off, man. You know? And see, they're, they're going to pay for uh, all the things they've done, right? Uh, second, second Thessalonians one and six says it is a righteous thing 
uh, to render uh, tribulation unto those that troubled us, man. All right. So they're going to get payback for the things that they've done to the children of Israel and definitely to the Lord's elect. Because actually, um, if I can get another scripture, I haven't brought it out in a while. But if the Lord will allow uh, this is Psalms 105 and 15, it says um, saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. You see? So they aren't supposed to be touching him in the Lord. And that's why that's another reason why Esau is going to have to hurry it up because see, now he's trying to jab the world. He's trying to put his MOTB on everybody so that he can try to get the Lord's elect. All right. He's trying to get everybody to give up on faith. But the Lord said, you aren't supposed to touch them and do them no harm. And so that's why he has to try to pick up his pace because he know when he touched the men of the Lord, he's going, the Lord is going to come back faster and faster, man. And he's worried about this, right? Uh, let me go to the book of Mark, uh, chapter 13 and verse 11. It says, uh, but when they shall lead you, as a matter of fact, let me see if I should start up. I'll start at nine. It says, but take heed to yourselves for they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues, you shall be beaten and ye shall be brought before rulers and Kings for my sake for a testimony against them. So that's why you got to have that. You're going to have to be a strong man in your mind and in your spirit. Because some men might get punched, you know. I had a dream once when Esau came and got me, and they they were punching me and hit me with their guns. <coughs> Excuse me, you know. But you gotta have um, you gotta have the the spiritual fortitude, the strength to endure all of that, man. You know, uh, like the, like the brothers be saying, you know, I need, we don't think the Lord is gonna suffer up brothers to get tortured, you know. And Lord willing, that don't happen to no brother. But don't be surprised. They ain't going to just, you're going to get a couple punches, bro. But that's okay. The Lord might give you some spiritual power where the punches might not hurt as much. It might not bother you, you know, or he may want you to get out of that situation. But it says, uh, but this Lord said you brought before rulers and kings for his sake, for a testimony against them, because the Lord wants even more reason to judge those people. And it's going to happen, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, and the gospel must first be published amongst all nations. And that's what's happening now. We're seeing that in the earth now where everybody that are Israelites that are here and about here and to and fro are waking up to the fact that they are the Israelites, the chosen seed line of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, the chosen children of the Most High, right? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and uh, those that are scattered abroad amongst the other nations, which are Israelites by blood and spirit. Uh, verse 11 it says, but when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand which ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not that ye that for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit. You see, and you know, I always tell brothers like, you don't know what you're gonna say in that hour. The Lord might have you quiet, the Lord might have you say, Call Law Yahweh Bashimi I was shy. The Lord might have you cuss them devils out. The Lord might have you say, fuck you. I'm going to see y'all in the kingdom. I'm going to put y'all in chains, right? But the Lord said, don't even think about it. Don't even premeditate it on it. Because even if you think about it, you're going to think about it on the way there. And then you're going to be like, what am I going to say when I get up there? The Lord going to give you a completely different download on what, what he wants you to say. Because like he said, it's going to be a testimony against them. And they, hey, we say we prophets. You might be prophesying on them about things that they've done in their life that nobody knows about. But the Lord might give you a download, let you know that we are the children of the most high and we're his servants. All right. So don't premeditate and, and don't fear. That's what the scriptures say. Fear not him that can uh, kill the body, but fear him. He can destroy the body and soul in hell, man. All right. So you're supposed to fear the heavenly father and his son. You're not supposed to fear Esau. Esau can't do nothing but harm your flesh. But our spirit is greater than the flesh. He said the flesh is weak, but the spirit indeed is willing, man. Okay. So you gotta you gotta fight through this thing. You gotta keep believing. You gotta believe that Yahweh Bashim Al Shai is gonna deliver you uh, from these treacherous times that are coming. But at the end of the day, it's all for His sake, so that we can become better, so that we can become stronger, so that we can give glory to His name and to to His power. All right, and the people are gonna witness this, man. And you don't even know. It's not. It might not. It says before rulers and counselors. All right, it, it said in governors. Right. So in synagogue, so it, it, ain't, it might not be two people in the room like that video. You know, it might be a whole audience full of people that are watching, man. All right. Especially after the persecution, after the things they said unto us and people wanting us dead. 
you know, but you got to settle in your mind to not fear. All right. Fear not. All right. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and get that one. Even though this one's more about uh, when the Lord gives you spiritual power. But hey, having that ha having that much balls is a form of spiritual power too. to be able to talk against your enemies in the face of death, man. That's spiritual power because it's something they wouldn't expect. This is um, uh, Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not di be dismayed, for I am thy power, Yahweh Bashem Shai. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You see? So believing in Yahweh Bashem Shai is, is going to be the way out, man. Okay? He said, fear not. Okay? I'm going to jump down uh, to 13. It says, for I, the Lord, thy power, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. And see, even scriptures like this let you know that the Bible isn't for everybody. Because why would the Lord say in the Old Testament, I'm going to help thee, you men of Israel, right? But then just think that this is open for everybody in the world. It's not. It's only for the Israelites. It always has been and always will be. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed, according to Malachi 3 and 6, you know. And so that's the spirit that you need to come in. Fear, fear not the guillotine, man. Fear not the sentence of death. You know, you're going to hey, you're going to wake up in the chariot, brother. And then you're going to be uh, thankful. You're going to wake up with a new, uh, getting a new body, rejoicing with your brothers and uh, the the, the uh, sisters and the children that are believing in this gospel and the glory of our Lord, standing stiffly for that name. And this is exactly why. You see, they don't, uh, it says uh, the, the, the righteous are as bold as a lion, man. Men are going to be bold in that day. And that's why the scriptures talk about standing stiffly for that name. You think Esau care about somebody, he, IUIC member that he pulls up in there and he's calling on Jesus? He's not going to give a damn about him. He's like, hey, get his ass out of here. Hey, just give him a regular death. Go outside and beat his ass or something, you know. But the men of the Lord, they bring him back. And, oh, that was another thing. They said uh, it was last used in 1977, so they discontinued this. This is how you know Esau is bringing back ancient methods to try to harm the elect because he wants it to be special. That's what Esau do. He, uh, he wants it to be a special death. You know, he's like, hey, we need to kill them in a way that's not being done right now. That's something that we stopped doing. All right, let's bring out the guillotine. But hey, out of your death, it's going to spring forth life, brother. So hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And peace and mercy to the house of David. Until next time, keep brothers, keep fighting on, and fear not, the Lord got you. Until next time, Shalom.